Cole, can you hear me? Yep, I got you there. Fantastic. Well, thank you for taking some time with us this afternoon. Um, we already have some questions for you in the queue, so we will kick it off with Chase Wilhelm. Go ahead, Chase. Hey, Cole, thanks for joining us. Um, so the 41 car had some, some good pace to it at the Coliseum. I know that track is a different animal, um, but do you feel like that's a sign of things to come for the team this season? Uh, why or why not? Uh, for sure. I mean, I think it's just, it's a mindset going into this year. You know, we want to go into this year and hit it hard and, you know, be able to figure out this car faster than any other team and try and figure out how to, you know, get us back to the front where we belong at Stuart Haas Racing. So um, it was a great way to start off the year. Great confidence builder. You know, I think, uh, you know, is it like you said, the what's going to, are you going to apply everything from that racetrack? You know, it's, it's kind of an oddball racetrack, but I think you can definitely take some, a few things to other racetracks like Martinsville and the short tracks and stuff like that. So, um, you know, everybody, everybody went there trying as hard as they could. So it was, uh, it was good to have this, the pace that we had and having a solid run. Thank you, Cole. Appreciate it. <clears throat> Our next question will come from Dylan Hildreth. Go ahead, Dylan. Yeah, with the with the next gen car coming in, uh, what do you expect the learning curve to be for drivers coming from Xfinity to the Cup? It, uh, it's going to be a reset for everything. You know, I mean, there is not much really similar about a Indy car to a Cup. Is you know, definitely you know hard on the Xfinity guys. So. It's definitely the year to start in Cup, I would say, because it's kind of an even playing field for everybody. But for all those guys, I mean, they're going to have to relearn, you know, every single year how to pretty much redrive these race cars. So uh, the steering is different. The tire is different. The aero is different. You know, like there's nothing nothing that really translates a lot. So it's going to be uh, it's going to be interesting for those guys who move up how they're going to adapt to it. Thank you. Next, we'll go to Bob Pockers. Go ahead, Bob. Yeah, Cole, having grown up, I want to say relatively close to the Coliseum, what what resonated with you maybe that didn't resonate, that wouldn't resonate from, you know, from drivers who are like from the Cowher lines and that kind of thing? Oh, well, I, it was cool that I could have, you know, like I had, I got tons of texts and tons of messages from friends who went to the race. And, you know, that's one thing that's, you know, always cool about your home racetracks is that you're able to kind of see friends and family and, just kind of have that atmosphere there. Um, but overall, I mean, it was just really cool to be back home and be able to put on a great show that we had, you know, I mean, I think NASCAR knocked it out of the park and really had a, a great racetrack that was racy and uh, they did a great job promoting it. And I think it was a, it was a real home run for everybody. Thanks. Next question will come from Lee Spencer. Go ahead, Lee. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Uh, I'm kind of curious how you hooked up with Second Harvest. Um, so overall, you know, we have our sponsor, Wow Wow Waffles, that's sponsoring us for a few races this year. And they have made a huge donation to Feeding America and the Second Harvest Food Bank. So being able to kind of work with them and they're they're all trying to on their mission to fight hunger. And it's been really cool, honestly, to get involved with the food banks and kind of pack bags for local schools and the community and everything. So it's been really cool to kind of work up with their initiative. And it, it really it gives you a great mindset because volunteering is something, you know, I wish I did more of before. And now it's something that, you know, I'm doing every every month pretty much. And it's it's definitely really rewarding to see in your community the thing, the people that you're helping. Did it kind of open your eyes to, you know, for somebody who's really never wanted for anything in their life, did it kind of open your eyes to other people who aren't as fortunate as you? Yeah, I mean, for sure. I mean, that's what it's all about. You know, I mean, we get so wrapped up in our own lives and our own problems you know, you're able to help out people that, that in our community. So, I mean, it's, it's definitely something that's been really cool to get involved in. And uh, I'm really looking forward to doing it in the future. Thanks again. Next, we'll go to Anton Rusko. Go ahead, Anton. Uh, thanks, Samantha. Uh, good, good afternoon, Cole. So you've driven the next gen car at Daytona last September. What changes do you expect? Do, do you expect to have uh, any changes in the car behavior in uh, in the speed weeks? Uh, from speed weeks to what we had in September, you're saying? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Exactly. Yeah. So yes, it's going to be a lot different. So um, they had a more recent test at Daytona, I think, you know, early January, if I'm right. And they changed a lot from the September test to that test. So it's going to be, um, it seemed like they were a lot more racy at the January test and all the drivers were pretty happy with the car and how it drove and how it drafted. Um, so I think they've made some huge gains on it since the September test when I, when I went out and tested. So it's, uh, I think we're all looking forward to it. I think it's going to be, you know, if it, you know, everything from the test lines up, it should be a really great Daytona 500. Thank you. Sorry, I couldn't unmute myself there. Um, next, we'll go to Tucker White. Go ahead, Tucker. Uh, Cole, the last two years you've been racing in the Cup Series with its 36 race schedule and decreasing off weeks as seasons go by. Uh, from a men mental health and relationships off the track perspective, uh, what kind of a toll does that uh, grind take on a driver like yourself? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely, it's an extremely long season. You know, we have one of the longest seasons in sports and we race a lot of races. And, uh, you know, the biggest thing is you just have to keep yourself uh, feeling good and you have to keep yourself in a positive mindset. You know, I think, you know, if you're dragging it out every single week and, you know, you're taking, you know, the last week, you know, a few days into your next week, you know, it's definitely, it starts dragging on and you start not feeling great and you start getting, you know, down on yourself. So you just have to put the last week in the past usually and move on to the next week and keep yourself feeling good. All right. Thank you. Next we'll go to Ashley McCubbin. Go ahead, Ashley. Hey, Cole, thanks for your time today. Looking back at the LA Coliseum, what, what were some of your initial impressions of the uh, next-gen race car? Uh, for me, I mean, it was extremely durable, especially when you beat and bang, you know, especially front to rear, you know, like if you hit somebody uh, in the back of the car, you know, you wouldn't cave the nose in like the last car and knock your radiator out. So they're really durable in that sense. Um, also, you know, just to feel the tire, you know, feeling how much drive we had, how much and honestly, how much grip we had at that small of a racetrack was uh, pretty surpri pretty surprising. So um, it was definitely, I mean, I think they knocked it out of park, like I said before. I mean, the car performed good. The racetrack was good. The event was good. So I don't, I, I, I can't give you any negatives, honestly, right now. But how great the event did pull off. Would you be interested in seeing them race more Coliseum-like style events in the future? And if so, what are some that would maybe be on your hit list? Ooh, I mean, I could definitely see him doing more, you know, I mean, it was such a success. Um, and honestly, I think the drivers, they liked it. So I think a race like that would be good to keep as like an all-star race or, you know, a non, non points race, just because, you know, when you get to beating and banging, it can get, when people, when points are on the line, it can get a little bit uh, outrageous, I guess you can say. So, um, but I don't know. I mean, in the future, I, you know, I think, you know, soccer stadiums are cool, you know, like even overseas, you know, I think an over a race overseas would be pretty crazy. I don't know. It, logistically, it'd be very hard, but it would be pretty cool. Thanks for your time today. Thank you. And our final question will come from Justin Parmer. Go ahead, Justin. Thank you. Um, earlier, or um, the past couple of weeks, uh, Rodney Shell just pointed out that the four car only has one car for the Daytona 500. Um, is that the same for the 41? Yes. So I think all our teams only have one car for the 500. Okay. So oh, I guess the follow-up question to that is there is going to be a race on Thursday night that you will take part in. Um, and how conservative do you guys have to play? You only got, you guys only have one car or, or can you really go out there and race for or qualifying position for the 500? Or are you guys going to be starting out on the back? You know, that's one of the things I probably need to ask my crew chief, Mike, <laughs> you know, um, you know, we only really have one car. I mean, I think we will have a backup car ready um, if something does go wrong, but it's something, you know, we don't have a lot of parts and pieces right now. You know, everything's a little bit hard to get right now. So it's one of those things I think you're going to have to go out there and race. You can't just go out there and ride around because that's not, that's not what we do, you know? So, uh, and you just, I think you have to be smart in certain circumstances. You know, if you know, it's getting crazy coming down to the end and you don't have a great shot at starting good anyways, you might as well just drop back and make sure you don't get wrecked. You know, like it's, it's one of those things, if you find yourself in a bad spot, you're probably going to have to get out of it because you don't want to risk wrecking your primary car. 
And knowing that you're locked into the 500, um, is there any concern about uh, running around the teams that are going to be trying to get into the 500 because they don't have a spot yet? Yeah, I mean, that's always one of the interesting things about the duels, you know. I mean, we're all racing hard up front, you know, and in the pack. And then you also have the guys who are trying to make the race. They're racing their guts out. So it's it's one of those races there's not really a clean or a safe spot, you know, at any super speedway race. But you just kind of have to keep an eye on them, know who they are, you know, know what they're racing for and kind of keep that in mind. Thank you. All right, Cole, thanks so much for joining us and good luck next week. Awesome. Thank you, guys.